Hello, and welcome to Aviation Deep Dive. The world of aviation in the 1940s was no stranger to experimental and unusual designs, and some air forces such as the Luftwaffe even gained a reputation for developing many out of the ordinary aircrafts. Some examples of this would be the Messerschmitt ME-232, a six-engine transport aircraft with a huge hydraulic nose ramp or the Ju-390, an ultra-long-range bomber intended to strike targets in America from bases in Europe. The aircraft we're looking at today, however, dwarfs even the 232 and the 390, as well as virtually any aircraft of the era. The Bloom and Voss BV-238 stood at over 12 meters tall, weighed 100 tons, and was powered by six enormously powerful engines. Despite its titanic proportions, however, much of the specifics of the aircraft remains unknown to us today, with much of its original documentation and records lost during the war in the bombing raids and what comparatively little remains shrouds the colossal 238 in a fog of mystery, far more elusive than anything of its size should be. But to understand how this enormous and bizarre aircraft came to be, we have to look back to its roots. Blumenvoss had originally been founded as a shipbuilding company in the late 1800s and 1900s, enjoying some success building steamers in its early days. By the 1930s, the company was in financial ruin. So it decided to try and diversify into building aircraft in an attempt to secure contracts from the new Nazi regime. The significant industrial capability of their shipyard could be put to use by building flying boats to which the Luftwaffe showed considerable interest. Putting pen to paper and cranking out a few successful designs, such as the BV-138, and having proven themselves to the German authorities, the company redirected their attention towards other projects, experimenting with four and six engine flying boats, with intention for them to be used in a military capacity. Building at such scale, however, was not well-charted waters for the world of aviation at the time and numerous changes were made on the drawing board until an aircraft began to take shape. The BV-222, another colossal design from Bloom and Voss, had served as a precedent in the early 1940s for an even grander design and would function as a valuable testing ground to implement improvements on their next aircraft, which was finally drawn up and given its designation 238. Resembling a ship more than an aircraft, which perhaps is not surprising considering the company's roots, it was decided to produce a smaller scale flying model to test out the flying characteristics first, before committing to the full scale version. Built at a quarter size, the aircraft would be flown by a pilot in the nose and an observer in the rear fuselage, and was over 11 meters in length. With shoulder mounted wings, the aircraft's characteristic shape was clear to see on the small test bed which would be powered by six two-stroke piston engines producing 21 horsepower each. The testing began in early 1944, but it immediately ran into issues. Fitted with 10 small wheels for preliminary tests, throttling up on a grass test field, the aircraft simply would not take off, which brought all the testing to an immediate stop, reasoning that the aircraft would perhaps fare better on water as it had been designed for. It was disassembled and set to be transported to the north coast of Germany, but it ran again into yet another hitch. French prisoners of war tasked with loading the parts into a train feared that it was a secret German weapon and intentionally dropped it from the crane in an attempt to sabotage the project, destroying its wing. With many other orders and commitments to focus their production efforts on, Bloom and Voss would not get around to repairing the model until over six months later, in September 1944. Finally, with a new wing, the aircraft was able to undergo a few test flights, though ultimately the data gained from these would be of no real utility, as assembly of the full-scale 238 had already begun months prior. Preparations for the construction of the colossal BV-238 had in fact begun as far back as 1942, but construction moved at snail's pace. Constant air raids over the factory as well as shortages of material meant that the 238 was not finished until January of 1944, but the wait had certainly been worth it. Powered by six Daimler-Benz DB603 engines, driving three bladed constant speed propellers 
and producing over 1,900 horsepower. The first prototype, designated BV-238V1, was a marvel of engineering. The flying boat was of an all-metal construction, 43 meters long and 60 meters in span, with a high cantilever wing and retractable outrigger floats. With sleek lines and with the strikingly characteristic Bloom and Voss look, the aircraft used its enormous wing spars as armor for its fuel tanks, which gave the aircraft its colossal 10,000 kilometer range, enough to fly from Germany to Japan without stopping. The unusual step pole was necessary to reduce water contact for the enormous hull and allow for takeoff, whilst the frontal cargo door would allow easier loading and unloading into the cargo bay. With an intended crew of 10, the aircraft, once airborne, would be the heaviest to ever achieve flight, beating out the previous record holder by an astonishing 30 tons. And the chief flight it did. In April 1944, the aircraft began flight testing, the enormous hull lifting off the northern German waters accompanied by the roar of 6 DB-603s. With the wing area equivalent of five average New York apartments, the Titan was capable of carrying upwards of 30 tons and was intended to be armed with a very strong defensive armament of 16 MG-131 machine guns and two MG-151 cannons. The 238 managed to achieve a respectable maximum speed of over 370 kilometers an hour at sea level and demonstrated docile and favorable handling characteristics. The aircraft featured two decks and, rather unusually, two gunners located on the outer section of the wings. This was only possible due to a tunnel that went through the inside of each titanic wing, which was tall enough for a man to comfortably walk through. Even against other large flying boats of the war, such as the American PBM Mariner or the Japanese H-8K, the 238 completely dwarfed them, being about twice as big as either. The 238 underwent just three further test flights, mostly in the large lakes near Hamburg, and was considered to have such an excellent performance that it should immediately be put into Luftwaffe service. Some different roles were considered for it, such as being a transport aircraft for U-boats, taking large quantities of supplies to German vessels so they wouldn't have to return to port to restock. A bomber role was also considered, but ultimately, the first prototype was slated to enter service as a transport. Moved to Lake Shashi, preparations began to set up a flight route between North Germany and Scandinavia before an Allied bombing raid effectively destroyed the Blumenvoss factory and cut off any supply of spare parts. Consequently, orders were given to try and hide the 238 from the air. Easier said than done. The aircraft stayed on the lake for the following months of 1944, out of service and of no practical use. In August 1945, just four days before the end of the war, the 238 was spotted by air by two British Tempests. The two British aircrafts lined up on the flying boat and opened fire with their 20mm cannons, heavily damaging the 238 and causing it to begin taking on water. Sinking below the lake surface due to extensive damage to the fuselage, the aircraft sat on the bottom of the lake for the following two years. In 1947, the 238 was eventually salvaged, but tragically immediately sent to be scrapped. A truly sad end to the aircraft, considering if it had survived only four more days, it might have been saved and put in a museum. As it is, the entirety of the sole produced 238 was completely scrapped as well as the half-finished hull of the second and third prototype. All in all, it went against all odds for the 283 to even be given the opportunity to finish construction or fly, as during the last years of the war, Germany had put a halt on virtually all bomber designs and focused on fighter production, and essentials such as metal and fuel were in serious short supply. It perhaps shows just how much stock was put into the 238 that it got as far as it did. But as was often the case with late German war technology, it came to a premature end. Nevertheless, the 238 stood as a testament to the incredible capabilities of engineering at the time and remains a famous aircraft to this day. With the unmistakable charm of a Bloom and Voss design and performance unmatched by any contemporary of its time, the 238 
well and truly earned its place in the pages of history as a legendary aircraft. Thank you so much for watching this video of Aviation Deep Dive. Consider liking and subscribing for more weekly content. And please also consider supporting us on Patreon. See you in the skies.